Hi and welcome to the How to Make This from Paint to Life. This is the Constellation Dragon that I used as Calamit for the Paint to Life episode with Grey Hollow. You can find that episode if you want to learn more about the lore of this dragon and the story behind it in the description below. Here are the paints that I used. It's Citadel mostly, and this is mostly an airbrushed model. In fact, very little brushwork. I used airbrush predominantly to get this kind of galac galaxy effect. Um, so you can pause the video there if you're looking for those references. So I wanted to go, here's the model that we were painting and the contest winner wanted that gem in the center of its forehead to be blue. And when I kept thinking of how is that going to work with the black and purple they also wanted the colors, it kind of gave me the idea of a star, like a constellation star. So I started with this pattern, did some googling, and I thought, yeah, what about a dragon that's made up out of like space dust? So there are constellations of dragons in the real world, one's called Draco, in between the Big Dipper and the Small Dipper, I don't know how people see anything out of that, but let's use it as inspiration and go for it. So my thought was that this dragon was going to be like a planet ending force, kind of like Gal Galactus. Um, it would use um, a space rock and kind of like fly in and just destroy the planet that awoke in it. Uh, so once I had that in mind, I needed a space rock. So using some XPS, XPS foam, some uh, tasty white glue to glue these pieces together, I needed to make a foam meteor that this dragon could be riding on. So with my hot wire cutter and the XPS foam, I glued these pieces together, weighed them down with a book, and left them overnight so that it would harden into an XPS foam brick that I could use. I also marked out, as you can see with black sharpie there, where the dragon would be sitting and the orientation of it. And uh, put a heavy Ravenloft book on top of it. Psh, tomorrow, here we are. So using the hot foam cutter, now that those are all dry, I'm cutting out the different pieces. Now I wanted this to look like an, um, an asteroid, so to, make, uh, so to speak. So I'm doing my best. Yeah, it'll sit him. It's a little high, so I'm going to trim it down. But the more I cut into this, the more I realize it's very blocky. And how am I going to, even if I take big chunks out of the bottom like this, it's still going to be very blocky with hard edges. Because you can see that this hot wire cutter is cutting nice sharp lines. So that's when I had an idea. And I should just also apologize for some of my camera work in this uh, how to make video was a little bit off. As you can see, it's mostly off screen. I don't have a, a monitor. And I'm sorry for that. But as you can see, I'm taking some jagged pieces, I'm leaving space for the dragon to sit, and I'm taking these big chunks out of this, but it's still going to be flat, especially where the dragon's feet are. It's going to be flat, and it's going to look silly. So how am I supposed to make this look like a piece of space rock? And that's where I came up with the idea that I was going to use a sealant, um, kind of like I've done before, but I'm going to use a Plaster of Paris. Anyone use that before? Plaster of Paris doing um, like school projects. So I cut out the top area so it wouldn't be flat. The dragon still kind of fits on it. Good. I took out some more big chunks uh, just so there would be a place for the plaster to settle. Um, I didn't mind that they were very um, linear looking and you can see the lines from the glue seams. And that's really what I didn't want to have when this dried. So I just took all these chunks out of it like this like I was slashing at it with uh, an invisible pickaxe because I wanted there to be spots for the plaster to settle. And I didn't want to have those seams. So mix this up some plaster of Paris you can get at your hardware store and start to slop it on there. Now it goes on pretty runny at first and then it'll start to solidify as... Wait, stop it. Did, did anyone just see that? <laughs> this is the first on Paint to Life. Play that back. No? Time lapse, slow it down. Look at the little spider friend walking underneath my hand while I was working. <laughs> Anyways, so it starts to solidify as you work with it, and that's okay. If you've ever mudded or um, did drywall work before, you're, you're used to this stuff. It's quite messy, uh, but it is water soluble. It's very chalky. Um, I see, I've moved it off of my. Uh, there we go, start it back in. So you see, it's starting to thicken up. You're pushing it around. Um, and at this point, you're probably wondering yourself, why am I doing this <laughs> as I was? But I've got a piece of parchment paper underneath it so it doesn't stick. And as it's like an ice cream or like um, as it's hardening, though, exactly what I was hoping would happen started to happen. The brush is leaving brush strokes. It's kind of leaving tacky little um, 
you know, little ice cream, <laughs> I don't know, on points. I don't know what you want to say. This looks like a piece of molten rock from space now instead of XPS foam cut. Do you see? That's the next day after it dried. Look at the edges where the brushes pulled it together. Here's me holding it. Column in the background there. Um, yes, that's awesome. That's what I wanted. That's a piece of space rock. That looks like a real rock. So, success. So now, we have to seal it because dry handling it, it feels like chalk and you feel it's going to break in your hand. So we're going to seal it, just like Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft, using the Mod Podge. And it's just craft paint. You don't need to use expensive paint on this. I used brown because at the time I thought I was going to be painting this to look like a rock, which would have been dis like different cocos and browns and blacks. Uh, so I'm starting with this light caramel brown so that I can just add darkness to it. Um, but then I changed my mind and decided that it's a space rock and should probably be done in the colors of purple to complement the dragon. That was the finished space rock though, before I started painting it with purples. So here's my airbrush, the beginning of the airbrush work. I'm using Nagaroth Knight to start on this. You can see I needed to invent something that I could spin this thing around with. So I had this turntable. I put paper towels on. Uh, you need to be able to spin while you're airbrushing. And this was, I've used the airbrush a few times, but so, somewhat new to me. And the purple and brown actually looked pretty cool. It had like these brown undertones. But by the time I was done with it, all that brown had disappeared. But I'm putting a nice dark, and I know that the front side of the rock is going to be lighter than the back side. So I'm going to escalate my purples now. Next is Phoenician purple. Um, this kind of gets blended with the last one, but um, not as direct. So I don't want to fill in those crevices. I want the, the, the darker parts to stay. But as I keep lightening my purples, now I'm moving to Xerxes, Xerxes purple. I'm flattening my airbrush out to come at it at an angle um, perpendicular to the table so that it doesn't change the colors in the valleys, those little peaks and valleys the plaster made. Now again, switch to Emperor's Children um, with some, uh, I think that's lightened Emperor's Children, but you can see I'm just blowing it right at the front of the rock now because that's the front where it's kind of burning. There's the white, yeah, straight white at this point, just at the front on an angle so that it doesn't get into the grooves and uh, change the back side of the rock so it kind of looks like it's glowing as it's moving in space. Now a little Night Lord's blue to hit the back side where I might have left a little not enough darkness to come off offset the white and there it was when it was finished. Here's a couple stills of just the rock. You can see the darker purple on one side and the white on the other. And with the blending of the airbrush, it has a really cool satiny effect as it as you look at the rock. So as you can see I even record this video of myself the white and as I go over top it transitions to the darker purple very cool in my opinion looks oh what's this kitty where are you going kitty you looking for the the dragon you want to paint the dragon let's paint the dragon so this was Calamy. It came with the Dark Souls board game I got it from my friendly local gaming store Phoenix Rising and it was great because the model was so custom and it was different so that's the one I was going to use for the contest so I got rid of all the auxiliary pieces the first thing I needed to do is use some of my sculpting tools to pry the dragon off of this big round base he came on, which is probably good for the board game, but uh, for my purposes it was just in the way, so it wasn't on very tight, and I doubt very many of you have this Calamite dragon that you're painting, and if you do you probably aren't following my tutorial because you're probably going to paint it like the black dragon Calamite, but for our purpose in Paint to Life this was going to be grey render for the episode. so. I super glued on the wings, the tail, uh, and head and torso was one piece, so just two wings go on there. There were some pretty big mold lines, however. So out comes the liquid green stuff. I use this quite a bit for sealing mold lines. Uh, comes from Citadel, and I put it onto this little um, dapping, or I guess it's a smoothing tool. Um, but I've started recently using these silicone silicone sculpting tools. So as you can see, I've got on my red dap uh, some of that uh, liquid green stuff, and I just finesse it into the holes using my silicone sculpting tools. If it gets sticky, add a little bit of water to it. Um, you can put lots of water on it, it'll wash it all away. So you don't want too much water, you want enough so that it's malleable. These silicone sculpting tools are great because they're 
um, non-stick and you can use them to poke and prod they have different shapes I usually just use the one for the whole job I'm trying to push the liquid green stuff into the cracks as much as I can so that when it dries it will shrink a little bit but it will make I find when a crack or a gap has a big uh, hole in it and you paint it the paint will shrink and it'll leave the gap if you use liquid green stuff even if it shrinks and they're still a little bit exposed like a little u-shape groove even though it's there and it's not perfectly flush when you add your paint it will not show a black line it the paint settles in that little divot and it makes a nice little seam so I highly recommend anyone who's doing miniature painting use some liquid green stuff get some in your arsenal for these sorts of seam lines. Now I'm using looks like a different shape here. Again, I'm pushing it hard into those crevices um, so that it fills them up. And then I use a little bit of water. You can see it wet on his back there to just smooth out the top. Now, if some of your green stuff gets on top of the dragon scales, you might be worried that you're going to clog the details. And invariably, you probably are. You can use a um, a paper towel like I did there to wipe some away some of the excess but truthfully gang unless you're a super artist looking for amazing results that are like artist brush worthy awards I've when I'm done I usually never see where the green stuff was all I know is I don't once it's painted and primed I don't see cracks that's what I notice so I've never been in a situation where I've regretted using this stuff I've never put so much on that I've gunked up other details because while it's wet, just kind of brush it away, brush it out of the scales. Uh, just be careful not to brush it out of the crack that you were filling. So yeah, there's a, a little bit of a longer view than usual of me filling all kinds of seams with liquid green stuff. Here it was now, ready to be primed. It's dried. You can see those seams have been sealed up. No more black lines and I'm using the Chaos Black Primer from Citadel to prime it. Now that this dragon is black and we knew this was going to be the ultimate color for space, I'm moving right into paint. Now I say white paint here because I was trying to flick with the paintbrush some paint and I just painted my son's room. That's actually latex paint, not acrylic paint. It's out of the camera there. It was a little teeny tester. That's why it's so small. But I found it was very bright white and it was very goopy and held together nicely in, um, in, in circles. And you can see also I've switched to a toothbrush to flick. Uh, I'm sorry for the shoddy camera work, but yeah, I'm flicking this with my toothbrush using this white paint, which is not a Citadel product, it's just a latex paint. You could do this with regular miniature paint. And you can see my finger got pretty dirty doing it this way, but both worked. So now everything else I'm using here is with airbrush. So I use some airbrush fin thinner from Vallejo and starting with a Night Lord's Blue from Citadel because space is black, but it's not entirely black. So you can see I'm putting a nice base coat, not everywhere. This is where, and again, I apologize for the camera angle. I'm not used to using the airbrush on camera and it was very high, but nevertheless, you're going to want to try. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but you don't want it straight black. So there's some blue, now some Nagaroth Knight on top of that blue and on top of some of the black areas. Remember the Dragon's 360? Go under him, on top of him, on his wings. If you were just at targeting a certain area, that's all you would do. Phoenician Purple, it's a lighter shade of purple. I'm just going to keep building up light. Um, because I have all those speckled stars on him already, these light paints are going on almost just as a, um, on top. And now, because this is so light, I'm applying it in only specific areas. These are supposed to be nebulas. I don't want this to go everywhere. I just want it to go in some concentrated areas where the stars are going to be nebulous. I'm going to get in close with the airbrush and hit in a couple spots so I get a concentrated blast of, of light which we'll touch up later. And I'm also concentrating on his head and ho on her head and horns because I wanted them to be light, which I changed later in the project. But for now, you'll see those horns and her forehead are getting extra attention to be light. 
So now I'm going up another color. We're into the ceramite white. So now I'm just doing concentrated, small, little teeny bursts where I'm going to want stars. All right. Now I'm about to make an air airbrush mistake here. Right here. Put a little too much on. Did you see that? Let's take a look at it. I've blown. It's a little too runny and I blew it away. So if I repeat this, you see in slow motion. See, I sprayed it and then I blew it along with the air. Now I look at that and I said, well, that's kind of a cool pattern. And it, it is. But look around it. All the stars and the speckling. I'm going to regret that later. Because it's light and it will not pick up. And I shouldn't have done it. So I should have fixed it right then. So I'm highlighting that as something for you. If you get that sort of thing, switch to the darker color, like one of the, the, the purples, and cover it up. But again, the point here is to find areas we're going to highlight dark, uh, sorry, light stars and blast them with a more concentrated um, white patch. Now, I also use the light pink and I use some different materials paper towel and a sponge to block some of the area. Um, it didn't work so well. So I just use my with hands again. I'm adding some more color to these concentrated areas of stars. Um, see, I'm going up the horn here, blocking the face. But again, it was too light at the face. It took away from the constellation star in the middle. So I'm going to change that later. But using this really bright pink, I'm going to zap these little spots where the stars are going to be brightest. Almost looks like dots or polka dots, like a Dalmatian. Um, and while I was doing this, I realized a lot of the darkness of the dragon and all the speckle I started with, it was gone underneath all this light cream everywhere. Okay, see how it's very creamy? Do I have a, a still? I don't. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, some Uriel yellow. I'm going to spritzer with some yellow stars now as well. And I'm also going to use Uriel Yellow and Dorn Eyes, um, Dorn Yellow for her eyes. But because I realized a lot of this had wiped away a lot of my star fields, this uh, airbrush work that I was doing, I'm reapplying more white dot stars on top of all the airbrushing that I did. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to use the Ceramite White or whatever white color you have. And on any of these built up areas, any of these little nebula areas that I've spray painted, uh, with my airbrush and they got significantly bigger I'm just gonna use steady hand and put a single white dot in the center to represent the star so those are the nebulas around the star I'm also applying a couple solitary bright dot stars in areas where maybe it was a little too dark the flicking of the toothbrush gives you lots of tiny little thousands thousands and thousands of tiny little dots but using the paintbrush to just jab, 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 jab gives you nice big cluster stars. Well, you see? I'm liking it. Little point, little point, little point. Okay. So now that I've put stars everywhere, that's what it looked like. I was happy. Lost a little bit of the purple and the, and the blue, but we're going to put some of that back on later. What I've also lost is contrast. This is very white now. It's not as dark as it used to be. So I'm using a null oil gloss and I'm going to spray the areas, not the whole thing. I don't want to blanket this in darkness. I want to leave some of those areas still light, but the tips of the wings, the horns, as I told you, the face was too bright. So I'm spraying her head and horns to using a null oil gloss. See how the contrast is coming back in the picture there. There's still cloudy bits, but there's a lot of it that is now dark. Okay. So now for the center star on her forehead, a metallic blue X13 from Tamiya. It's like a metallic blue. I thought it would look cool, but it's too dark. I'm using a toothpick to try and spread it out, but you notice you can barely see it. So I'll have to touch that up later, but I'm really happy with how she looks now. Now this is this, uh, this step here is using a Druchi violet. Because there are some areas just full of speckles that are, are white, this is a shade. I'm just painting this on rough in rough areas um, to add a little bit more color, a little more nebula. So not everywhere, just in areas where there's, I think there's a good shot on the tummy here. See how chalky it is and white? Just by drawing a little snake up her tummy of that Druchi Violet, 
that really helped add more effect. So now that I've got that uh, star, I'm putting some Baharoth Bahar blue. That's going to be the blue in the center. And uh, now it's time to mount her. So I'm using paper clips and I'm filming this not in stop in um, time lapse. This is real. I use a paper clip. I use some snips to snip them into like one centimeter, one and a half centimeter pegs, which is like three, I don't know what that is in inches. It's really not an exact science. Use your snips, straighten paper clips and cut them. For those of you new to miniature painting, I'm not so new, but I'm still not great. This is called pinning. If I just glued this dragon on top of my meteor, the slightest bump, if you drop her, if you pick her up by the dragon and the meteor's kind of caught on something, you'll just pop her right off. She has very flat hands and it will not glue very well to the rock. So what I'm doing is I'm preparing these little teeny pieces of metal that I'm going to use that hand drill. And if you don't have a hand drill like that for pinning, I strongly suggest you get one because you can use a drill drill as well. Like if you have a drill with a drill bit that's small, but the hand drill is just so much, you can get just a lot of finesse. So here I am on the palm of her back left leg. I'm just going to push down and hold it and spin it. And I'm literally just drilling out a little curl of plastic. You know, the angle, depending on your application, isn't that important. In mine, it's not important at all because I'm going to fix these little paper clips into the hole when I've drilled it with glue. Um, so she's going to basically have stilts to stand on. Each one of her four paws will have these little paper clips sticking out of it. Um, and then I'm going to, well, we'll get to that. Right now, though, these are a pain in the ass to pick up. You can use tweezers and a little bit of Gorilla Glue. Just testing the hole. Yep, that's a hole. So throw some, I think I drill out the rest of her her hands. A um, little Gorilla Glue in the hole. And then seat those um, paper clip pegs. And that's what we're doing. Using a tweezers to pick this up because they're so dang tiny. Gonna feed it in the hole with the glue and let it harden. And then she will have her spokes under her feet and hands. From there, because the, and I'll start talking this because I think we're coming to it. Because the space rock is made out of XPS foam with that plaster of Paris coating, it's really, it's, it's not hollow, but it's very soft and these are hard spokes. So I'm just going to line her up in this next segment as I skip over gluing all these things into her hand. So I line her up with all her spooky legs and then I just hold the rock hard and I press her in and you'll hear little pops as they pop in just like that. She's seated. If you want to readjust, feel free set it down make sure she stands upright make sure she looks good see this here little spokes sticking out of her hands so that's now there are holes in the rock and basically guys this is just get the glue put the glue on the holes in the uh, space rock or uh, what did I do that yeah see there's one you'll have four or put them on the uh, the pegs themselves and then line them up press her in hold it down let it settle and you are done let's take a look at how gray hollow finished up i was very happy with this if you don't have an airbrush i don't know how well you can achieve a lot of this with paintbrush but you very well might here's some pictures and because she was so black i took a picture of her against a white backdrop which is not something i usually do um some good angles here those red fiery eyes with the uriel yellow and dorn yellow um probably could have had more color variation in the galaxies. I know if you look at Hubble Space Telescopes, you'll know the galaxies are all kinds of colors and nebulas, but because the winner of my contest chose black and purple as the colors, those are what I kind of stayed with. And there's that space rock with the plaster of Paris to kind of look like it's coming towards the planet to become an extinction level event. Kaboom. And there, oh, and I stripped the background in some and put it just on black so we kind of get the idea of what it would look like against a black background. And that's the, what I call a constellation dragon. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Please like and share and subscribe to my channel, Paint to Life, if you enjoy this content. And I will look forward to seeing you for our next episode. 
on Saturdays for stories and lore and for Tuesdays for painting. That's all I have for you guys tonight. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. <laughs>